Hey everybody, uh, in the last video we ended by talking about what makes Node.js more than just JavaScript. And I was talking about if you go to their website and you go to their documentation, they've got um, all these great APIs that you, know, you wouldn't have with just client-side JavaScript. So today we're going to take a look at one of these APIs, in particular the file system API. But more than going just deep into the file system API, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, handling packages and the Node.js ecosystem, things like that. So the first thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, going back to our example here where we had uh, this kind of like desktop app called Node in the last video. If I do an ls, it's just got this index.js file. And if I check that out, it's just like function foo and calls John Cooperman or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about is the require statement. And so basically, if you come from a language like Ruby, Python, PHP, Java, any of those languages, um, you'll, you know that there, you need a way to include other packages, whether that's including uh, another file that you've written, like if I had index.js and app.js, I needed some functionality from one and the other. Um, you know, you'd need to include it, uh, or whether it's community packages, like if there's this cool file system API that I want to use. Um, so basically, I'm kind of going to talk around this issue here. Um, I think it's a really nice API. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but so the basic idea is uh, by default, like if we go back here and we go into our node REPL and I type FS and I hit enter. Um, you get this like really nice, uh, you know, like a list basically, I'm going to full screen this, of all the different things that, uh, you know, the file system API can do. Um, so the thing to know though is that when you're going to be using it in an actual application like this, you're going to need to require it. And the way that you require it is something like this. You do var and then you can give it any name you want. In this case, I'll do fs because that's you know the, the typical way to go. And then equals require fs. And so basically what this is doing, um, so now I can console log fs. And now I can break the REPL and I can run node on index.js. And I'll get the same thing. So if I didn't require fs, and I go ahead and I console log it here, it's going to give me this error. FS is not defined. So the basic concept is here, uh, Node has a pretty small core package, and it doesn't pollute any namespaces by including this kind of stuff. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, because how often do you make apps that write and read from the file system? Not all the time. Uh, so if you're not doing any file system stuff, why include and bundle the file system API with everything that you're making? So an important thing to note um, is whenever you're using one of these APIs, and, and they'll say right here, um, this is, for those that aren't familiar, const is a ES6 way of declaring variables, but the same thing applies, fs equals require fs. So uh, you'll see it in the documentation that you need to require it before using it. So if we're doing any of these tutorials and you get into a situation where you run the app and it's giving you something like crypto or fs or um, HTTP is not defined, just remember you probably forgot to require it at the top. So with it required, uh, again, we can run node on it. We can see that we have this you know, big API, all this cool stuff we can do. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about, just because it's a little bit confusing, is as you install apps from NPM, the package manager, you'll also use a very similar and identical syntax to require. So you do like var foo equals require you know, some random NPM script. Um, so it'll be basically indistinguishable uh, which one of these are core, like you didn't have to go out to NPM, and those are the ones that you'll find here, um, and which one of these you do have to go out to NPM for. And this kind of works out nice because you could also use the exact same syntax for a local file. So if you had a new file called app.js, and it I don't know, you know, did something, console log something or whatever, you could require it in the same way, uh, require app.js. Um, so this is cool. Basically, it's the same syntax, whether it's a, an addition to the core library, like FS, something that you'll go out and grab from NPM, which we'll do in another series, uh, or a local file on your, on your computer. So that's kind of the gist. I just wanted to talk about requiring the different ways that you can do it and just kind of one thing I think that was just tough for me to get my head around was the difference between these which you don't have to go download anything for uh, or if you look at npm.js um, 
you know, you wanted something like Express, you actually would have to go out and download this. You can't just, if we just um, var express equals require express, that's not going to work, right? Because it doesn't know what Express is. So if we go ahead and we run node on that, uh, cannot find module Express. So even though they look identical with these require statements, some of them, like community packages, you'll have to go out to the internet and download before you can require. And then other ones, like the core packages, these ones, you don't have to download anything. You just have to require if you want to use them. Uh, so I hope that helps. In the next video, we're actually going to dive into the file system uh, library and do some cool stuff there.